time to get started. Now let's learn how to connect to your data and how to create your first Power BI report from this data source. In the following chapters, the Power BI report will be further explained and you will learn how to create even more sophisticated evaluations. Please start the Power BI application. Please keep in mind that if you use Power BI in the pro version now, Power BI Desktop will continue to be used as your startup icon. The application itself is still called Power BI Desktop, as you can see here. Power BI Pro is basically the desktop version with active licensing in the background. Here you can see the user interface divided into four main areas. In the middle here, you can see the canvas. There you can create so-called tiles, which contain data and their visualization. A compilation of these elements is called a report and such a report quickly becomes extensive because you can also create reports that consist of several pages, for example, one page per product, per region, or whatever you need. Data, which are displayed here on the right as fields, can be dragged into this report. Here, you can see various visualizations that you can assign to the data, for example, a pie chart, a stacked bar chart, a filled map, a world map, donut charts, etc. You will see this in more detail in a moment. At the top of the page, you can see the navigation bar and here on the left, you can switch between reports, the data, and the model which shows the relation between your data. So, without further delay, let's get into the exciting part, the data analysis. First of all, you need, clearly, data. So, click on Get Data you can see an immense number of possible data sources, some already known, like Excel, Access, or PDFs, and others. Just keep in mind that there is a connection to Power BI for every data source. Let's look at an example. We will now open an Excel file, the sales report. Power BI now establishes a connection to the data source. The Excel spreadsheet here has several worksheets. First of all, I'll take the Revenue North America, which a colleague made available to me. By the way, this is quite realistic. It can happen that you get data in Excel tables from others and have to evaluate them yourself. Perhaps you will also become the Power BI expert in your company so that your colleagues will be happy to call on you for help with such tasks. Here on the right side, you see the data already in a preview in this case, a revenue list with individual orders, including the sales date, customer information such as company name and address, the salesman, the sales area, the products, etc., will be displayed. If I had noticed an error in the data here, I could edit this data source as well. But that's not the case, so I'm ready to load this data into my Power BI data model. In the background, Power BI establishes a connection to the source data and creates a so-called data set. This data set enables you to always work with the same data structures, even if the data changes in the background. A data set therefore defines where the data comes from and more importantly, how it is transformed so that it can be displayed uniformly in Power BI. The table and its fields are now ready for evaluation in Power BI and the fun can begin. You can start by creating tiles that contain certain data. Let me show you this, first of all, for the revenue. Here, I click on the sales region, lead it over here, and let go. And of course, I don't just want to have the sales region here, but also the revenue, which can be found here and dragged onto this tile. And now you can already see the revenue per sales region here. That was quick, wasn't it? As you can see, the presentation on my screen is still somewhat small and illegible at the moment. You can change this by going to View, Page View, and then either adjust the width or actual size as you prefer it. Now, in addition to the sales per region, you may also want to display sales per product. For this, you can take the field Product Name and drag it here into the empty area in the canvas, and here again, 
the revenue is displayed. Wonderful. This may seem familiar to you from the pivot tables in Excel, as it looks quite similar there. But wait a little while. It will become even more interesting. Next, I would like to display the revenue per country. Here you can take the country, change the visualization to a simple table, and again, the revenue is shown. If you want to sort your sales according to sales volume and not alphabetically according to sales region or product name, just click above. Now you can see descending revenues as it is typically represented. Now you have seen how to create simple evaluations with just a few clicks using Power BI. A further useful extension of these small tables is to show the revenue by percentages in addition to the absolute values. So, take the revenue here, and then under values on the right side, please select show values as, and then percent of grand total. You can do this for the other tables as well. Revenue, and then display the sales here, not as a sum, but as a percent of grand total. You could also display the average, the minimum, or maximum here. Great. Now you have created meaningful, small tables with just a few clicks. I already mentioned that the graphics and tables are interactive. This means that they are linked to each other, so the data are related to one another, and you can take advantage of this. If you click on Canada, for example, only the corresponding values are displayed, namely the three sales regions in Canada and the products with their respective sales figures in Canada, expressed in absolute values and additionally in percentages. If you click on Total, all data will be displayed again. Where is the Warper sold? Only in certain regions. Aha! You can't do that with pivot tables in Excel. The first important difference. Now the data becomes meaningful and you can draw certain conclusions from the data. For example, why is a product sold in America only in certain areas, but in Canada sold in every area? You could take a closer look at that. Now, please save the work result. You should save the file and the source file in OneDrive for Business because then Power BI updates the data automatically once per hour by default. You can then share the file with others for editing. So, I created a new folder on my OneDrive for Business called Power BI. And there you can save your file with the name ACME Sales Report. The file extension for Power BI data is .pbix, as you can see here. In a nutshell, with Power BI, you can access various data sources. It's smart to organize access to hundreds of different data sources and present them in a way that Power BI can handle them instead of bothering with different file formats at the Power BI level. That way, you can fully concentrate on evaluating the data in Power BI. So, now the data source is analyzed and the columns are displayed as fields that you can see on the right. You can drag these fields into the canvas and create reports in the form of tables or graphics. I will show you the graphics now. Let's say you would like to make this sales distribution available for each country, once again as a donut chart. I click here on the donut under visualizations. A new tile appears below And now I drag the data onto this tile again. Country and revenue. So, still nice to place. And again, if you click on it, the data matching the selection will be displayed interactively. Please save the result of your work, preferably in the OneDrive for Business folder again. You can find a useful work result with just a few clicks. Interested in learning more?